Continuing our discussion about therapy for asthma class. In this video, we will talk about the mast cell stabilizers. It is important to mention that the mast cell stabilizers have no role in treatment of acute asthmatic attacks, but they are used in treatment of chronic asthma. And in this video, we will talk about their mechanism of action, their pharmacokinetics, therapeutic uses, adverse effects, contraindications, and overdose. So the mast cell stabilizers include medications like the chromaline sodium and the ketotifen. So regarding their mechanism of action, so the chromaline sodium is a mast cell stabilizer that inhibits the mast cell degranulation. And as we learned before, the mast cell contains many mediators like the histamine and the leukotrienes, and those mediators are responsible for the allergic symptoms and the bronchoconstriction that happen in asthma. So when the chromaline sodium inhibits the degranulation of the mast cell, this means that there is a prevention of the release of those inflammatory mediators. And this means that there is less inflammatory mediators and less allergic symptoms and bronchoconstriction. The ketotifen, on the other hand, is an antihistamine and a mast cell stabilizer. So it works by blocking the histamine H1 receptors, leading to less allergic symptoms and it also work as to prevent the mast cell degranulation and inhibits the release of the inflammatory mediators same as the chromaline did so it inhibits the release of inflammatory mediators like the leukotrienes and the histamine from the inside of the mast cell now let's talk about the mast cell stabilizers pharmacokinetics so the chromaline sodium is available as oral solution, nasal spray, ophthalmic solution, and inhalational solution. And the chromaline sodium oral solution absorption is really poor, and the bioavailability is around 0.5 to 2%, and the majority of the medication, 98%, executed unchanged in the feces. The ketotifen, on the other hand, is available as oral tablets and solution and an ophthalmic solution. And the oral solution of the ketotifen has a very good absorption, unlike the chromaline. Now let's talk about their therapeutic uses. And let's start with the chromaline sodium. So the chromaline is FDA approved for prophylaxis of the bronchial asthma attacks and it is given as meter dose inhaler in some cases and nebulizer in others and it is also used as an adjuvant treatment for allergic rhinitis and it is given as intranasal and it is also given in case of the systemic mast cell disease which is called the mastocytosis in pediatrics and adult patients and in this case the oral solution is used and the oral chromaline sodium solution is also used to improve symptoms of diarrhea, flushing, headaches, vomiting, urticaria, abdominal pain, and itching. So it is used to improve the allergic symptoms. And it's also used as an ophthalmic solution for treatment of allergic eye conditions such as keratitis. Now the chromalin is used off-label for prevention of serious reactions to foods and in management of inflammatory bowel disease. The ketotifen on the other hand, it is oral form specifically, is FDA approved for prevention of asthma attacks or anaphylaxis as well as preventing other allergic disorders. So with the chromalin, the inhaled form was used for prevention of asthma attacks, while in case of the ketotifen, there is no inhaled form, 
so the oral form is used for the prevention of the asthma attacks. Now the ketotifen in its ophthalmic form is used to treat allergic conjunctivitis. Now moving on to talk about the adverse effects of the mast cell stabilizers. So the chromolin sodium is irritant material that cause local side effects depending on the site of the administration. So in case of the inhalational route, it would cause irritation to the mouth area, to the pharynx, and to the lungs. So we get hoarseness of the voice. We may get esophagitis, laryngeal or pharyngeal edema, bronchial irritation, cough, and pulmonary infiltrates. And all of those side effects from the irritation caused by this material. Now the intranasal route of the chromolin, it would irritate the nose area. So we would, so we would get nasal congestion, sneezing, nasal itching, nosebleeds, and headaches. Now the ophthalmic solution on the other hand, we would get irritation to the eyes. So we get eye dryness, itchiness, and puffiness. Now, the chromolin oral solution may lead to headaches, diarrhea, pruritus, nausea, myalgia, abdominal pain, vomiting, articaria, and angioedema. So it may cause some allergic symptoms itself, although it is used for treatment of allergy. Now let's talk about the ketotifen side effects. So the ketotifen oral route side effects include drowsiness, weight gain, dry mouth, irritability, nosebleeds, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headaches, and fatigue. It may also lead to anaphylaxis, so it may also lead to allergic symptoms itself, and it may lead to liver dysfunction because it is metabolized by the liver so it may lead to liver damage and it may also lead to blood disorders and seizure disorders. Now the ketotifen eye drops may lead to eye dryness, eye swelling, eye itching, pain and eye discomfort because they are irritant to the eyes. Now let's talk about the contraindications. So both of these medications are contraindicated in patients with hypersensitivity reactions. And finally, let's talk about the overdose. So with the chromolin, the overdose is rare, and that is because of the low bioavailability. So it is because of the poor absorption and the low bioavailability, it is very rare and hard to overdose the chromolin. But on the other hand, the ketotifen overdoses are possible so it may lead to central nervous system symptoms like sedation, confusion, disorientation, agitation which is severe, nervousness, hallucinations which, which is false perception of external stimuli, ataxia which is inability to control movement, tremor, myoclonus which is jerky movements, nystagmus which is dysfunction in eye movement, dysarthria, which is difficulty speaking, and slurred speech. And we may also get some cardiovascular system symptoms like tachycardia, which is faster heart rate, hypotension, cardiac arrest. We may get also pulmonary edema, and we may get pancreatitis and hepatitis. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give us a like comment your ideas and questions, and subscribe. And this video is a part of a bigger class. It's called Therapy for Asthma Masterclass. Check it out. Link will be in the description of this video.